Vince McMahon has been found guilty of selling steroids to his wrestlers. This has seen the stock price of the WWE plummet. The McMahon family have now all sold their stocks in the company to a new owner of the WWE as we enter the McMahonless universe. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we have got the start of a brand spanking new series right here on the channel. It is Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. It's a game I've been playing for as long as I can remember. And this is a series I've been wanting to do since about the end of last year, if not a little bit longer. And we're finally here. I finally come up with an idea and come up with a story that I want to do. So let's rush into this into this new series. And just a couple little bits to note just before we do crack on with the show. The McMahons are still in the database, but they're not in the WWE. And all of them have left. Triple H is gone, Shane's gone, Steph's gone, and Vince is gone. So maybe over the course of the series, that'll be something that we keep an eye on. See if they go to any other companies. And also, this database was made before Roman Reigns returned in real life. So he's still out for the best part of a year on this database. So yep, with them little notes done, let's go and crack on with the show. And tonight's show is being held in front of 13,000 people at the Charleston Civic Centre. And the opening segment of the night just sees Michael Cole, Corey Graves and Jonathan Coachman welcome us all to the show and announce that the McMahons have left and that there's a new owner and there's rumours that he's going to be showing up at some point in tonight's show. So nothing really too much to be said about this segment. It's a D-plus rating. Not really going to expect too much more from these three, are you? So let's just move very quickly on. And we get in to the main meat of the show. And we have an opening segment where Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, John Cena and Braun Strowman are all having some words. They're all not very happy with each other. So we get a tag team match arranged for tonight. That is going to be tonight's main event. John Cena and Braun Strowman versus McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. And it gets us a B plus rating, which is a very good way to get into the main part of the show. Drew McIntyre did a great job improvising interactions with the crowd. John Cena as well, as you would expect. But Braun Strowman is not suited to his gimmick. So that's maybe something we're going to have to look at changing. And at the announce desk, Jonathan Coachman was weak. Again, what do you expect? That I am going to be changing. The new owner has got some new ideas for the announce table. So keep your eyes peeled for them in future episodes. And following that up, we have our first match of the night. And it's Dean Ambrose defeating D. Brian Kendrick in a C- rated match. Little bit disappointing, but can't really expect too much more, I think. Yeah, Dean Ambrose gets the win in 10 minutes 28 with a Dirty Deeds. Pretty much bog standard, your usual Dean Ambrose match. Dean Ambrose getting a B and Brian Kendrick getting a D-. So, yeah, decent ratings there, but nothing setting the world alight too much. Following that up, we are taken to cameras backstage where the Revival are attacking Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, the Raw Tag Team Champions. And sending them a message that they're not very happy with them. And that they are going to come for their tag team titles. And that gets us a D rating for the segment. And three out of the four people are not suited to their gimmick. Both of the Revival and Bobby Roode are not suited to their gimmicks. So again, maybe something else to change in the future. Next up after that, we've got our first title match of the new era and of the show. 
and it's Ronda Rousey defeating Mickey James in 9 minutes 25 with the armbar to make the first defence in this database anyway of her WWE Raw Women's Championship. So C minus, uh, Ronda Rousey getting a C plus, Mickey James getting a D plus. Any work or improvements? Ronda Rousey is improving in her rumble skills, so that's always nice to see. And then after that, the man comes around. Becky Lynch struts into the arena and she announces that as she won the Royal Rumble match, she is going to be taking on Ronda Rousey if she is still champion come WrestleMania. So this gets us a B plus, a very good rating. I wasn't really expecting that because I know TEW has some issues sometimes with giving good ratings out to the females, which is a little bit unfortunate. But yeah, very happy with this rating. B+. Plus. Ronda Rousey was underwhelming, but this has got the Rousey and Becky Lynch storyline started. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. And next up after that, we've got Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins backstage having a bit of a face-to-face, -face, having a bit of a mouth-off at each other. And yep, they agreed to have a match later on tonight. And this gets us a B rating, which I'm very happy with that. Again, we're getting some decent ratings now. We're getting into a good part of the show, you would hope. And after that, we get a match that I'd be very interested in seeing in real life. It's Finn Balor versus TJP. And it gets us a B minus. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a C, maybe a C plus, something around that. But yeah, that's decent. And Finn Balor gets the win in 15 minutes with the coup de grace. And Finn Balor's not suited to his gimmick. TJP is not suited to his gimmick either. And Finn Balor got an in-ring performance of B-. TJP got a D. And yeah, didn't really have too much else for Finn Balor on this first show. So I thought chuck him in with TJP. See what kind of match we can get. And if we can get them sort of ratings... Maybe might have to get TJP involved a little bit more. And then we are backstage and John Cena is just talking about himself and talking about the main event and talking about the new owner of the WWE, wondering who it is. He throws some funny names out, some people who it could be. Could be James Corden, could be Jay-Z, it could be blooming anybody. But he doesn't know who it is. He hasn't got a clue. But he's going to be very interested in meeting whoever the, that individual is. And that gets us an A rating. So I'm very happy with that. John Cena, as you would expect, is very good in these hype type segments. But it did say that he struggled when going off script. A little bit unfortunate, but I'm sure that's not something we'd have to worry too much about with John Cena. And then we've got Elias in the ring, just bigging himself up, saying how he is the best thing to ever happen to the WWE. And how everybody should already know what WWE stands for. And that is, of course, Walk With Elias. And that takes us to his match. And it's him versus the Long Island IC, Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. But we don't know it because Elias gets the win in 9 minutes 14 with a top rope double stomp. Yep, pretty much normal match. Trying to build Elias up a little bit. So the C- minus rating, not the best ever. But it's Elias, it's Ryder, there's no real heat between them. So yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite content with that rating. And following that up, we've straight into another match. It's Alexa Bliss versus Bailey in a match that gets a C rating. Alexa Bliss gets the win in 10 minutes 34 with a twisted Bliss after Bailey gets distracted by Alexa Bliss's latest BFF, Mickey James. So C rating for that. Alexa Bliss got a C. Bailey only got a D plus. Would have expected a little bit better out of Bailey if I'm gonna be honest. And Alexa Bliss is improving in her performance skills. So hopefully she can get a bit better at that. In a segment that gets us a D plus, Sasha Banks makes the save 
as Bailey is getting beaten up by Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. And this is just advancing the women's tag team division storyline. We have got Elimination Chamber coming up. So we're going to be having a women's tag team match in there for the, for the women's titles. So that's going to be something to keep an eye out for at the pay-per-view. Then in a B-rated match, I was expecting a little bit better, if I'm going to be honest. Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler, they had a good, a decent match. 19 minutes 52 it went. Seth Rollins getting the win with a pedigree. Don't know why he's still using a pedigree. Might have to change that in his move list. But it says here, Seth Rollins not suited to his gimmick. But the match got the crowd buzzing. Seth Rollins with a B+. Plus. And Dolph Ziggler with a C. So that just carries on from where they was having a little bit of back and forth earlier on tonight. And to be honest, I didn't really have too many ideas for either of these guys. Because I've not got any real storyline ideas for Dolph Ziggler. But Seth Rollins does, of course, have a storyline coming up. And that involves the beast, Brock Lesnar. And he comes out... He attacks Seth Rollins and that pretty much makes their match for WrestleMania official as Brock Lesnar stands over Seth Rollins with the Universal title and he tells Rollins, I've been champion for pretty much non-stop two years. Do you think you can really be the one to take the belt away from me? And so that gives us an A-star rating. That is a brilliant rating between the two. So Lesnar and Heyman, as you will expect, have good chemistry. And the segment deserved better announcing. Again, that is something that is going to be changed maybe as soon as SmackDown. Then we are taken backstage to Finn Balor, who's bumping in to the Intercontinental Champion, Bobby Lashley. He tries to challenge him to a match. He says, look, I beat TJP earlier on tonight. I'm the first ever Universal Champion. I want your Intercontinental title. But Bobby Lashley just looks at him, smirks, and says, no chance, little guy, and then walks away. So that gives us a C-plus rating. And that starts the storyline between Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley. And then we are in the ring, and Bobby Roode and Chad Gable have dragged themselves to the ring, and they are furious with Dawson and Wilder for the attack earlier on in the show and they challenge them to a match for the Raw Tag Team titles right here, right now. And then the Revival come out, they of course accept and that sets up the next match. This gets us a C- minus rating. All four guys, or three of them even, are not suited to their gimmick. But those are going to get changed. And the match itself gets us, again, a C-minus rating as Bobby Roode and Chad Gable are unfortunately unable to keep hold of the Raw Tag Team titles. Their injuries from earlier on in the night are just too much. And the Revival win the Raw Tag Team Championships with the Saturn Machine. And in terms of in-ring performance, Bobby Roode is the best, apparently. He got a C rating, and everyone else got D pluses. So maybe might have to give Bobby Roode a little bit of a push, now that it's looking like he might not be involved in the Raw tag team picture for too much longer. Then we are in the ring for another tag team match, and it is the main event of the night. It is Braun Strowman and John Cena versus Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. It gets us a B- minus rating, which is okay, which isn't too bad. And it's Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre getting the win over Strowman and Cena when Drew McIntyre defeated the man who you can't see with a Scott drop. Following interference from the magician, Shinsuke Nakamura. And in terms of in-ring work, John Cena was heading soldiers above everyone else. Yeah, Nakamura getting involved, hitting John Cena with the Kinshasa to set up McIntyre for the win. 
as that is going to be starting off a storyline between Cena and Nakamura, possibly going all the way forward to WrestleMania. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye out, see what happens. And yes, Cena got an in-ring performance of A, Strowman got a B-, and McIntyre and Lashley got Cs. And so the Strowman and McIntyre storyline has moved forward with this segment. And of course, the Nakamura and Cena one has started. Following that match, an all-out brawl starts in the ring. Finn Balor gets involved to even things up. And so it's Cena, Balor and Strowman fighting against McIntyre, Lashley and Nakamura in the ring when the new owner makes his voice heard over this over the Titans Tron and over the speakers and he says Oi 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 stop this stop this I am the new owner I don't want this you might have thought that you could have got away with this under McMahon but this is a different time I am the new owner the future is bright the future is musky Yep that is right I am the new owner Elon Musk and everyone just drops what they're doing looks around in absolute shock and that is how the show goes off the air the segment gets us a C plus rating and yeah how about that Elon Musk did not come out looking brilliant but it's his first time on the microphone it's his first time in front of a live live audience such as the WWE. So didn't expect too much more out of that. But the colour commentary gave the segment a boost. The announcing quality lifted the segment. And yeah, that is how the show ends. How about that? Did you see that one coming? Did you think Elon Musk would be the new owner of the WWE? Let me know down below who you thought it was going to be. Let me know if there's any other ideas for any other kind of authority figures you would like Elon Musk to bring into the company. And so, yep, yeah, that is where we are going to leave it for today, guys. We've got a B- minus rating. And the general feeling is that we haven't got enough storylines going on. It's the first show. We're going to get some more storylines going. We increased our popularity in eight regions. But the show lost us popularity in 18. Little bit disappointing, but oh well, first show, things are going to get better. So yeah, that's where we're going to leave things, guys. I am Bad Jokes Gaming. Subscribe for more Total Extreme Wrestling content on the channel. And if you are a Football Manager fan, please, please consider following my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash badjokesgames. I stream Football Manager five times a week on Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. And so yeah, follow me over there. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash badjokesgaming. And yep, I shall see you tomorrow for Elon Musk's first episode in charge of Smackdown Live.